right, seventh grade, we are making our most popular recipe of the year, soft pretzels. Now, I sent you Alton Brown's original recipe, which makes eight soft pretzels. That's a lot. When we're in class, we usually split this recipe in half, but I wanted to give you the original because it's nice and easy to read for at home. If eight soft pretzels seems like a little much, definitely split it in half. Um, you just go through your recipe, divide each ingredient in half, and I'll go through what those amounts will be when we measure them. So first things first, pretzels are a yeast bread, and we need to activate our yeast. So I'm gonna start with getting one and a half cups of hot water, not scalding hot. It's about 110 degrees, but it needs to be warm so it activates the yeast. Yeast is a living organism, and it's going to come to life uh, to produce carbon dioxide, and that's what makes our bread rise. That's what makes our pretzels rise. So I'm going ahead and fill this up to one and a half cups. All right. I'm going to put it here on the counter and check it at eye level. I'm a little bit over, so I'm going to pour a little bit more out. And like I said, Yeast is a living organism, so we're going to need to feed it. Let's start by adding our yeast to the water, and your recipe calls for one packet of yeast, and I'm using regular yeast, but it comes in a jar, and a packet is equivalent to two and a quarter teaspoons. So here's two teaspoons and a quarter, and you can see yeast just looks like a tan powder. Okay. When you buy yeast in the store, you may also choose to buy it in the packet form and it will come with three packets. Okay. Quick rise yeast is like has a silver type packet and the Fleshman's regular yeast um, usually is yellow and red. So here we have our yeast and I'm just going to give it a little stir in the water and yeast needs more than just water to grow. So I'm going to add two tablespoons, let me just double check. Nope, one tablespoon of sugar. And this is just regular white sugar. So we'll add one tablespoon of sugar to help feed the yeast. And two teaspoons of salt, so that doesn't get too much action going. Salt actually slows down yeast a bit. So two teaspoons of salt. And that's it for now, okay? What I'm gonna do is give this a stir again. Make sure the water, the sugar, the salt, the yeast, everything is in there. And you can see it's kind of like an opaque color. And there's a little few like chunks of yeast that you can see um, in the water. What I'm gonna do is just let this sit for about five minutes until the top becomes foamy and opaque. That's how I know the yeast has come to life. Yeast is a really cool leavening agent. Um, it's all natural. We're buying it at the store in a powder form, but before this existed, um, yeast just comes from the air. So if you, like many families, decided to make sourdough over the quarantine period, sourdough is just water and flour and it collects the yeast and the bacteria from the environment and over a week or two or three, that becomes active sourdough starter because it got the yeast from the air, okay? So ours came from a can, very easy, and we're just gonna let this sit for a few minutes while I get the rest of our dough ingredients together. Now, Walton Brown always suggests weighing your flour. So I do have a scale available here at work and I'm going to weigh it. We need 22 ounces. There's 16 ounces in a pound. So that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I need one pound, six ounces of flour. Okay. And that's how my scale reads it. So I'm just going to pour flour into one pound, six ounces. Now, if you're watching this and thinking, man, I do not have a scale at home. How am I going to do this? It's fine. You don't need to have a scale at home. You can measure it using traditional measuring cups. It's about 
uh, four and a half cups of flour. So I'm a little bit over here. I'm gonna take a spoon to take flour out until I'm right at one pound, six ounces. So there's my flour. All right, move a few things aside because it's about to get messy. And I have some melted butter, two ounces, which is a half of a stick, uh, and my yeast. All right, now, even in that short amount of time, my yeast has started to activate. So I can see here that there is foam on top. I'm not talking about big giant bubbles, but it is like more opaque, thicker, really fine, small bubbly. And what that's doing is it's telling us our yeast is coming alive. It's starting to eat the sugar in the water and produce carbon dioxide as its byproduct. So this looks good. I'm gonna give it a stir and add it to our flour. So I have the flour here. I'm just gonna make a little well in the center. Add our yeast and water mixture and add the butter. Definitely don't add the butter until you add the water. If you try to add the butter and stir it just to the flour, it's such a small amount that it does get really weird. So you just add it at the same time you're adding your yeast mixture. Put this aside. And then you wanna give this a stir, okay? With pretzels, in FCS, we always make them by hand. And I think making yeast dough by hand is something everyone should try um, a few times in their life. If you have a mixer at home, I do have one hiding back here, you could also put this in the mixer um, and mix with the dough hook and knead it that way. But when you do it by hand, you really get, I don't know, you get to just feel and know the process. And that's how you learn about how bread should feel and look when you're making it. So I have this stirred together and it's time to knead it and prepare it uh, to rise. So I'm gonna move my papers aside and just dump out the dough onto my counter. Like I said, if you have a mixer, you can certainly put it in the mixer, but I find that kneading it by hand is a really fun hands-on way to make pretzels. So you can see it's kind of all shreddy because it's not all mixed together. And what I'm going to do is knead it. And what that means is pulling the dough together, pushing it down with the palms of my hands, folding it, and then turning it. So pushing it, folding it, turning it. And pushing it, folding it, turning it. Now, sometimes you'll find that the dough sticks to your counter. As you're pushing and folding and turning and kneading, if you're finding, uh-oh, this is getting a little sticky, it's sticking to me, it wants to stick to the counter, it wants to get a little bit messy, you should stop and add a little bit of extra flour. So you can see I have a little bit of dough sticking to me. I wanna make sure that this doesn't get too sticky and messy. So I'm going to add a pinch of flour. This is not a cup of flour, right? It's just enough to keep my dough from sticking. If you add a ton of extra, your dough can just end up with too much flour uh, and be dry and tough. So make sure when you're adding the flour, it's not too much, just enough to keep it from sticking to you and to your hands and to your counter. As you work it, it's going to become smooth and elastic. It usually takes about six to 10 minutes um, to knead by hand, okay? So it's gonna be a workout and you wanna keep going until it's nice and smooth. So I will cut out the next five minutes of this video while I'm kneading by hand uh, and we'll pick back up when the dough is nice and smooth and elastic. So remember okay, so a few minutes have gone by and my dough is really starting to become smooth and elastic. I didn't add any more flour. I've just been pushing it, turning it, and folding it this entire time, okay? So here's what it looks like, and you can tell that it's ready because when you push it down, 
it starts to spring back. That springiness is gluten developing in our dough. And gluten is the protein that makes bread stretchy, okay? And it gives it a nice, tough, chewy texture, not soft like a cake. So what I'm doing is just forming my dough ball into a nice dough ball, nice and smooth. And I have a glass bowl here where I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil, just vegetable oil's fine in the bottom, put in my dough and swirl it around so it has plenty of oil on the bottom. And I'm even gonna give it a little squirt on the top so that it doesn't dry out and nothing sticks to it. Rinse off my hands real quick. So with our dough, we want it to rise until it doubles in size. And if you are doing pretzels all in one day, put a little plastic on here, then all you do is lightly cover it with plastic because it is going to grow and leave it on the counter for at least an hour, um, up to an hour and a half. If making pretzels is you know, a huge undertaking, right? And it is pretty messy in your kitchen. If you wanna split the mess up into two days, I would recommend making the dough the day before, wrapping it and placing it in the fridge. This will slow down the rise so that you could bake and boil the pretzels the following day. So while this is rising, I'll stop the video and we'll come back in about an hour when it's doubled in size and we're ready to shape, boil, and bake our pretzels. All right, seventh grade, soft pretzels, forming the pretzels. It's been about an hour and a half and look how big our dough is right now. It's actually, remember I told you to put that plastic on loosely? It is pushing against the plastic, totally expanded above the top of the bread, or the bread is above the top of the bowl. So that means this is risen and it's ready to shape into pretzels. So I have a few pans here. Uh, I have a cutting board. This is just a big leveler. I know it looks like a knife, but it's just a metal spatula. I have a little bit of extra oil just in case we need it. And because I have a kitchen scale, you could have a kitchen scale um, available as well. So to form our pretzels, we're gonna open this up. It's very exciting. And I'm gonna save this plastic because I'm just gonna put it on our pretzels over here after we form them, okay? And then we wanna dump this out. And this recipe, if you make the whole recipe, makes eight pretzels, all right? So we need to divide this dough into eight pieces. This is where you could weigh your dough, divide it by eight, and weigh each ball so that it's perfectly equal. Or you could be like me and just eyeball it. Uh, you do want them pretty equal in size, but if you kind of cut this, remember I'm using a metal spatula, it looks like a knife, but it is not. If you cut this kind of like a pizza and get everything evenly shaped and evenly divided, then your pieces are probably close enough in size um, that your pretzels will be about the same size and that's fine. So I'm dividing each quarter in half and now I have eight pieces of dough. Put my leveler aside and here's the fun part. You're forming pretzels. So I would definitely suggest like, if your family wants to help you with this, this is a fun activity to do with your siblings or your grownups at home. And I'll put this aside so that I can grab just one piece. And you need a pretty good length of clean countertop. And I don't have anything on my counter, it's just clean. And there's a little bit of oil on the outside of the dough. That should keep it from sticking to me. If my hands start to get really sticky, I could put a little bit more oil on them, but I find that the oil on the dough is usually enough. So what we're gonna do is I have my little triangle. I'm just gonna kind of press this out into a rectangle, okay? And then roll up the rectangle into a little snake. This helps to form the nice interior of the pretzel and like pops any big air bubbles that are in your dough. And then, like a three-year-old playing with Play-Doh, I'm going to roll this out into a snake. Now, 
It is kind of like Play-Doh in that it's fun and we're shaping it and we're rolling it, but you don't want to have to reshape it a bunch of times. If I make this mess it up and try to squish it back into a ball, it's really never going to be the same after I squish it back into a ball. So take your time and roll them out, but try to just do it one time per pretzel to keep them nice and beautiful and formed. Okay, so I have a piece of pretzel about two feet long, okay? Now, I don't work at Annie Ann's, so I can't do the magical pretzel forming. Maybe you can learn the magical pretzel forming at home, but I'll show you how I do it. So I take my big two foot long snake, lay it on the counter, and the way I'm looking at it, it looks like a mountain, but to you, it looks like a U. So I make a mountain, and then I have the tails, okay? I make a fish, or it kind of looks like, like a breast cancer awareness ribbon, right? But I make a fish, then I hold the end, flip the tails, so it's twisted twice, and then you take the feet, and flip the feet. When you do that, you have a pretzel, okay? And you place the pretzel on a plain, not greased, just plain baking sheet. Cover it with a little plastic. That was from our bowl. And now you form your next pretzel. So let's look at that again. We have our triangle. Squish your triangle into a rectangle type shape. Roll your rectangle into a snake. Okay, roll your snake to be about two feet long. I'm using my fingers on my clean countertop. I haven't added any flour and I haven't added any oil. Okay, I get it about two feet long. And now I make a mountain, twist to make a fish, twist the tails and flip the feet. And that makes a pretzel. Usually at the end, I kind of push down those tails so that it helps to stick them together and I place it on the pan. I'm going to keep forming each of my eight pretzels. This is why it's nice if you're doing it with your siblings or a friend or your family, everybody can form their own. But we're gonna keep forming the pretzels and I will pick this video back up when all eight of my pretzels are shaped. Have fun shaping. Okay, seventh grade. So I've got a lot of things set up uh, and we're getting to boil and then bake the pretzels, okay? In your kitchen, you're gonna have to think about where everything fits. Because I have unlimited pans, I have pretzels on just plain ungreased pans. And then I have two pans that are lined with parchment and spread with oil. I also have my pot of boiling water on top of my stove that's preheating. I have some baking soda measured, two thirds of a cup. I have some egg whisked. I have some pretzel salt. I'm set up with a cooling rack on top of some paper towels. And I have a slotted spoon and a spatula. So there's a lot of things here and you're gonna have to think about before you start um, how you're going to set up your area so that is the most organized. Now, I have my water coming to a boil and the first thing that we're doing is adding baking soda to our boiling water. And this is really important. You'll see it's gonna bubble up quite a bit. So it's really important because this helps form the chemical reaction on the outside of the dough that makes pretzels pretzels. If you don't boil them with baking soda, then you're just going to have bread, okay? So I've added the baking soda to the boiling water. I'm gonna give it a little stir, and this is really boiling. We need it pretty much boiling, but it's okay if it's not really boiling. So I'm actually gonna turn my heat down from high to about eight, which should be fine. And now we're going to boil our pretzels, basically one or two at a time, depending on how big your pan is. So when you boil your pretzel, you hold your pretzel by where the feet join, okay? And then you carefully place your pretzel in the water 
and then let go when it's about half an inch above the water. Don't slap your pretzel in from two feet over the pan because there'll be a big splatter. But at the same time, don't touch the boiling water because you don't want to get it burned. So I'm just using the water in the pan to kind of make sure my whole pretzel's covered. It's been in the water underneath about 20 seconds. And then I'm gonna use my spatula and my slotted spoon to take it out. So I gotta get a good grip on it. Let the big drips come off and then put it right on a cooling rack to finish dripping while we do the next one. So remember, you pick the pretzel up where the feet attach you start to lower it into the water. When your fingers get close, let go and raise up your hands so that they are not splashed. There shouldn't be a lot of splashing because you're not dropping or throwing your pretzel in the water. You're just placing it in the water. And it needs to boil for about 20 seconds. And what this does is it's kind of like making a bagel. It makes that tough pretzel outside and it makes it brown and it makes it taste like a pretzel. So this boiling process is really important. Okay, and then the special chemical, the key to this whole chemical reaction is baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, which encourages the Maillard reaction in the outside of our pretzels. So I'm gonna keep boiling. This is the third one. I'm gonna keep putting them in one by one for about 20 seconds until they are all done. And when they're all done, I'll come back and continue the video, finishing up these pretzels and getting them in the oven. Okay, so all eight of my pretzels have been boiled and I already moved four to my lined and oiled baking sheet. And now I'll move the other four. So letting the water drip off and then moving them to an oiled Baking sheet's really important so that they don't stick. If they're very wet, they're definitely gonna end up sticking to your pan. If when they boiled, they got a little misshapen, you can always kind of straighten them out a bit and patch them up on the pan. And now what I'm gonna do is egg wash and salt these. So I have just one egg whisked with a fork and a little pastry brush here. If you don't have a pastry brush, you can use like the edge of a paper towel to dab them. And you just wanna lightly brush each pretzel. And the reason we do this is it helps make them nice and shiny, and it's also going to help the salt stick. Pretzel salt that I'm gonna put on here is different than table salt or than kosher salt. Um, it's bigger, crispier, and it's actually a little bit less salty than those salts because of the way the crystals are formed. So if you don't have pretzel salt, and most people don't, don't worry about it. Put a little bit, not too much, of kosher salt, or you can even just egg wash them, leave them plain, and when they're done cooking, put cinnamon sugar. Definitely do not put cinnamon sugar before you cook them because it will catch on fire in your oven. Okay, we're gonna cook these pretzels at 450 degrees and my oven is preheating right now and sugar at that temperature um, is a disaster. It will burn, turn black, potentially catch on fire. So if you want salt, then egg wash and salt them. If you want cinnamon sugar, then just egg wash uh, and after they're cooked, after they're out of the oven, then you can add that cinnamon sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and egg wash and salt this other pan, and then we're going to put them in the oven. I have two racks about in the middle of my oven because I'm cooking on two pans, and they're gonna cook for about 14 minutes. If your oven is very good at evenly cooking, then you can leave them on the same tray the whole time, like on the same rack. If you find that a lot of times when you cook multiple things in your oven, it's not always even, you could switch the pans, um, switch the rack halfway through, which means you take one pan out, move the other pan to the other shelf, put the other pan on the other shelf, basically switching their positions so that they cook really evenly um, throughout those 14 minutes. So you would just stop at seven and switch them, okay? You want these pretzels to bake for those 14 minutes 
until they're really nice and golden. And when they're done, 450 degrees, they're really hot. Make sure you always put the pan on top of the stove here so that it cools down. You never wanna put a hot pan straight out of the oven onto your counter or onto your table. So you use your oven mitts and you carefully place that pan right on the counter uh, when they are done. So I will pick up these videos right when these pretzels are coming out of the oven. See you then. Okay, it's time. Pretzels are pretty much done. Have about 20 seconds left on the timer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my oven off and open the door all the way. Turn the timer off. Open the door all the way. Remember, I don't want my face in there. I'm putting on my oven mitts, which I know you can't see. And here is the reveal. These pretzels are beautiful. I feel like I work at Annie Ann's. Remember, I'm putting them right on top of the stove so that they don't burn my counter. Now, these are extremely hot. We bake them at 450 degrees. So keep your oven mitts on if you're really excited and you just wanna get them straight off the pan. I will say getting them off when they're hot is sometimes a little easier than when they're fully cooled uh, because of the way they may or may not stick to the paper. But I have a little spatula, I have my oven mitt, and I'm just gonna carefully pick these off. I always have scissors here because sometimes I cut in between the peppers, I cut the paper, uh, sometimes, the paper sticks more than I had hoped and I'll need to pick the paper off. If you end up eating a little piece of paper, that'll be fine. But these pretzels look delicious. Um, I'm gonna let them cool. I'm gonna enjoy them here with our custodial staff at BCMS. I hope you enjoy them with your family at home. If you make a bunch of pretzels and there's extras, you can always freeze your pretzels and reheat them in the toaster later. Please make sure you let these pans cool 100% um, before you go to wash them. So I'll get this one out of the way, show you this mountain of pretzels. Um, this is our most fun recipe in seventh grade. I really hope you try it and enjoy it and let me know what you think.